Hey everyone, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. If you're new to my channel, I am a first year cut flower farmer. I grow in New Jersey in zone 6B and I typically focus on making YouTube videos on the business side of things. So this is another market video. Um, I'm gonna preface by saying that this was definitely not one of my best markets, but it was a very, um, how do you say, it? it really made me think. Um, it really made me reflect. I'm gonna talk about those takeaways. So we're gonna go a little bit backwards. I'm gonna actually start with a little bit of harvesting, especially with gumfrina, because on my Instagram, I show that my gumfrina has finally come in. I planted about 20 gumfrina, um, the raspberry cream gumfrinas, and it was just like, I mean, they've overtaken that part of the field in a good way. Um, so I wanted to do a video on that because I've been getting questions around just, you know, are my stems ever gonna get longer? So I'm gonna show you what the difference looks like because I have some white gumfrina that I planted about a week and a half behind those, right? And you'll be able to see the difference. But then um, you'll get some footage of the market, some of the bouquets that I sold, the options, and then more importantly, what I learned from this market and really what I'm gonna avoid doing in the future. So stay with me and hopefully this video helps you if you're doing markets. So one question I've been getting a lot is just, will my gumfrena have longer stems? So I wanna show you how I'm harvesting these and I have a really good example because you can see here that the pink gumfrena here um, actually got a, earlier start than some of the white gumfrina and you'll see the difference um just about like i would say it's a one and a half week lag between the white and the pink gumfrina and what the stem length is going to look like all right so i already harvested a bit of gumfrina here before i realized that i should do this video um but you can see here this is the pink gumfrina you know this guy isn't ready yet for harvesting but you can see how long this stem is and for a stem like this, I would be cutting it over here. So we're talking at least about maybe like, I would say 18 inches of stem length. Um, this guy here actually is ready to harvest. So I'd cut it over here. And again, it gives me a good 16 inches of stem length. So the pink gumfrina, more or less, um, I've actually harvested through a lot of them. They're really good stem length. It's the white ones here that are about a week and a half behind where you can see the stem length is a little bit shorter. So for example, like this guy is ready over here, but I would have to cut at least here, if not lower to get the full stem length. And what I found is that it's okay if I cut it short because these things grow so quickly and it actually helps them elongate more. But I could also just wait here and not cut the white ones and they will also elongate over the next week or two. All right, so we are now one day out from market and I had the chance today to make my bouquets. I basically harvested yesterday, uh, let them condition, and then I harvested a little bit more this morning. So um, yeah, like I made bouquets and to be honest, I have a little bit more than what I thought I would have. So truth be told, I was a little bit burnt out from the two weeks ago Facebook Marketplace Endeavor that I did in the last week, we were out of town for a wedding, but I still was doing Facebook Marketplace a couple of days leading up to the wedding. So I wanted to take it easy. I told my local grower, I'm just gonna use whatever I have for this market. It's gonna be a hot market. It's gonna be 94 degrees. And until I would say yesterday, I actually wasn't sure what the weather was gonna be look like from a thunderstorm perspective. So if there is any thunder um, that is heard at the market, the market automatically shuts down and they're, they're allowed to make that call, you know, a couple of hours in advance, right? So I didn't wanna get stuck with a lot of flowers, even though I know I can push them on Facebook Marketplace, I just didn't wanna to have to deal mentally with doing that, right? So um, I ended up with 10 big bouquets and eight what I'm gonna call posies. So I'll show you what they look like. So for the big bouquets, I actually now have some flowers that are in bloom that I didn't have for the past few weeks. So here is one example and probably the first thing you'll notice is that I finally have um, a dahlia coming from my field and this is a Bacardi dahlia. But besides the dahlias, 
Um, what's also new here is I've got um, Flamingo Feather Slosia. I will say that this one is a little, it's, it's more white with some hints of pink. Um, on the Johnny's website, it was like very pink. So I, I, I know I'm not the only one who is saying that it comes more on the white side because on Facebook groups, other people have been saying it. But not only do I have the Slosia, now I have Gumfrina. So you saw earlier that I harvested a lot of Gumfrina. And that was ultimately the question that I had was, how do I make this Gumfrina work for me? So that's where the posies come in. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I do want to show you one more bouquet. So this one is what I call tipping into fall colors, tiptoeing into fall colors, because you can see that the um, bicolor sunflowers have started to bloom. Um, and this one, very similar, the Slosia, the Gumfrina. There's also some basil in here. So this one's the um, cinnamon basil. I actually had some of the Mrs. Burns citrus basil flowering in the other bouquet. But um, I am going to be selling these for $17. Now, I have been selling my big bouquets at $15 consistently for the past few markets. Um, this, to me, feels like that it is worth more than $15, but not yet $20. If I had more green filler, like a mint or, um, you know, I have nine bark outside, but I didn't want it to feel too dark. If I had more green filler, I think I could push this to $20. But, you know, it is going to be hot tomorrow, which is going to impact the traffic levels. So I don't want to push too much. And what I'm going to do is they're going to stay at $17 for the majority of the market. And in the last hour, I will probably bring them down to either $15 or even below, depending on where we are. So let's talk about the posies. Um, one of the things that I've been seeing on YouTube a lot from both Flower Hill Farm and Sunshine and Flora is them doing $5 bouquets, which, you know, typically is um, a no-no, I guess, from a business perspective, because um, your time and effort makes it very difficult for a $5 bouquet to be worth your time. Um, but that being said, I had a lot of Gumfrina. I had a lot of shorter stem zinnias and just some stuff that felt like, you know, um, like I, I had longer stem slosia and sunflowers, but you know, I can't make a bouquet out of slosia and sunflowers, right? So what do I do with the scraps that normally would get trashed, composted, or, you know, I guess in the case of gumfrina, you can dry it, but I want to see if I can do something with it. So this is how I came up with a posy. So the posies are actually just these smaller bouquets. The majority of it is actually Gumfrina, but you can tell there's other stuff in here. So there's a bit of a small sunflower. There's some zinnias. There's even a lisianthus in here um, and some celosia. Let me show you some other ones. So this one is more um, zinnia, two sunflowers, a straw flower. Actually, there's two zinnias in here. A lot of Gumfrina, obviously. Uh, this one's another example. You can tell that there's also a sunflower in here. Um, where is it? It's this one. Um, straw flower, zinnia, some status. You get the point. These are small. These are cute. You know, you're probably not going to be able to put them into a vase on your dining table. I mean, you could with the right vase. But these are meant for like, they're great for the bathroom, they're great for like an office, or you know, um, if a child is with you, right, they wanna buy flowers, these are great for that. And so um, Sunshine and Flora was saying that she found a lot of success in selling these posies because people would buy a big bouquet and a posy. Um, and Flower Hill Farm also basically reiterated that, um, that a lot of mothers like buying these for their daughters. So these are not going to be $5 though. Um, I am going to value these at $7. And again, the reason being that, you know, like they're sunflowers, they're zinnias, they're straw flowers. I mean, you know, I think this is definitely worth more than $5, but not yet $10, right? So I was just happy with this because I had a bucket left of Gumfrina. Like I felt like I used a lot of Gumfrina in my big bouquets, but I was just left with all this Gumfrina. So I would literally just take a bunch and then take some stems of zinnias, whatever else I had left, like status or sunflower. And then I would cut the stems off, 
rubber band it. And when I time myself, these literally did not take a lot of time. It took me two minutes to make them soup to nuts, including wrapping. When I time myself doing the big bouquets on average, I was averaging anywhere from like four and a half to five minutes. Um, so, you know, from a timing perspective, they feel, how do you say, um, proportional, right? Like it's literally taking me half the time to make a bouquet that I'm selling for, you know, a little bit less than half of the big bouquet, but at least I am, you know, taking advantage of um, the leftover stems that I have. So one other thing to talk about before we log off for tomorrow's market is just timing and labor. So I actually was a lot more deliberate this market in terms of putting on a stopwatch timer every single time I went out to harvest and every time I went downstairs to make bouquets. Cause I didn't like, I, I didn't make bouquets all at once. I took like a break or whatever. Um, I significantly cut down on the time because typically if I'm buying stems from someone else, I obviously don't need to go through the process of harvesting, right? So that is actually labor that um, I don't have to spend. But this time, since it was all me, I said to myself, I want to make sure that I am capturing that time and I know how much time I'm spending. So I ultimately spent about two hours harvesting. It took about one hour to harvest the gumfrina itself. And then it took another two hours to make the bouquets. Um, so four hours total, you know, I think, yes, there's definitely some time that I can cut down on the bouquet making. I was actually pretty happy with, you know, the four to five minutes per big bouquet. Um, one of the things that actually also really helped me from a bouquet making perspective was, you know, this is the first time that I am working without a lot of significant filler because typically I am buying some sort of leafy filler from my grower friend. Um, but I saw Sunshine and Flora basically make her, sun or her sunflower bouquets um, with three sunflower heads and then putting status in the middle. And that worked really well for me um, in terms of both speed, but also just helping me frame the bouquet. So, you know, you can see here that I've got sunflowers surrounding on the outside, but there's a piece of status sticking up in the middle. Typically, I put the status at the end on the side, um, and I still do that to round it out, but I've really found that putting a spike interest or even status in the middle, because typically I'll put filler in the middle, right? Like a leafy filler, but this, you know, for example, this one has a celosia right in the middle, and for whatever reason, it just makes my bouquet making process a bit faster. So, you know, we're looking at about four hours of total labor time. I've always said that I value my labor at $15 an hour. So we're looking at $60 for my labor to bring these to market. Now I said I have 10 big bouquets. So if I'm selling them at $17, that gets me to $170. And then I've got, um, how many was it? It was eight posies and I'm selling them at $7. So $56. Ultimately the small posies are going to make up for my labor costs more or less. Right? So I'm looking at basically netting a profit of $150 from the, um, from the, the, or sorry, $170 from the big bouquets, which I am fine with. So this video will pick up after, um, or will pick up hopefully tomorrow at the market if I have time to shoot some footage. Hey guys, so it's market day and it is pretty windy. We are five minutes out from the start of the market. So I'll show you what the setup looks like. And as you can see, I actually had some more sunflowers that popped open this morning. So I'm doing three, four, five dollar bunches. So we are nearly halfway through the market. It's almost noon and we're at 411 in sales with 180 or 131 in flowers. So I only have three of the big bouquets left, a bunch of posies and still some sunflower bunches. All right, down to our last hour. Today has honestly dragged. Um, last hour is always the slowest. We still have a few bouquets left. I have two bigger ones and we'll call it one, two, three, five posies and some sunflower bunches. So, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about some takeaways with today's experiment. Um, you know, okay flower day, but not fantastic so far. 
All right, so it is Tuesday, actually two days post-market. I actually did a video on Sunday after the market and um, I was really thinking about the market and sleeping on it and was just, you know, getting some other like bigger takeaways from the market. So um, ended up scrapping that video and now recording a new one. So I'm gonna talk about the numbers, profitability, all that stuff. But I also want to talk more importantly about my learnings for this market. So this market was a relatively uh, slower market, we'll call it. Um, it was 94 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, at that point, that is just really, really hot. So we actually had a really good start to the market. There are quite a few people who showed up before 10 a.m., I always have a hard time selling anything before like we'll call it 10 30 a.m. It's just consistently I find the people who come to the market early are on a mission. They know exactly what they want. They're typically looking for groceries and they're not looking for anything else. Um, the people who come to my booth are those who usually arrive after 10 30. Um, they tend to just you know meander a bit more. They're not on a mission per se. So um, so yeah so even though there's more traffic earlier I didn't sell my first bouquet until it was like 10 10, 18 a.m. Now the traffic significantly dropped after noon. So I would say around like 11:40 was when like you could actually see a significant difference. Um, there's always a joke with the guy who sells bread across from us. If there's no line, you know that that is not a good sign. It is a bad omen. So around that time, that bread line really started dwindling down. Um, we even ended the market a little bit early, like about 15, 20 minutes early because there was a storm coming. So all this to say, you know, weather wise, the traffic was not great. The second thing I want to mention is that I actually have another vendor that does sell flowers. Now they are not a primary flower type of vendor. They actually primarily sell produce. However, they seem to grow flowers on the side and they sell their flowers for dirt cheap. Um, they have these bundles, which, you know, I think just quickly looking at it, she could probably sell them for at least 12 to $15. Um, most of them have at least, you know, one Teddy, one of those like Teddy uh, sunflowers, right? So they're it's that um it's the fuzzy kind of sunflower right so it looks very unique and they pair it with very bold colors um but she typically has like straw flower gumfrina status um Slosia, right so it's not like you have a lot of zinnias in there but she does have a lot of like flowers that are good for drying and i bring this up because she's selling them at a five dollar price point um, and that ultimately influenced some of the decision making that I made for this market because I did see people walking around with those bouquets. She is actually um, so far away from me in proximity at this market. She's at the very beginning that I have no idea what her stuff looks like what her booth even looks like i'm usually manning the table by myself so it's not like i have the chance to go out and see it but um the only time when i do see her flowers is when people are walking around with it and you know people are pretty savvy even buying flowers at this market where they're not going to buy flowers until the end right so there's like there are a few people who come in the beginning because you know i am in that part where you make the loop and then you go around. So the majority of people I would say will actually come to my booth on their way out. So that way, you know, the flowers are not out of water for a prolonged period of time. Um, and the same happens with her where people on their way out, they're buying flowers. So it's hard for me to truly gauge how much she's selling. Um, but that being said, I actually had a customer a few weeks ago who bought flowers from her and then bought flowers from me because the flowers were different enough where, you know, this woman felt like it was worth buying flowers from both vendors. Um, and so I was able to talk to her a bit, understand the pricing, see the bundles, that kind of stuff. So, um, let's talk about the numbers first and then I'll talk about the takeaway. So now that you have that in context in terms of this market, my pricing, everything. Um, I ultimately was selling three types of bouquets at this market. I was selling my larger bouquet at $17. Then I was selling my posies at $7. And then of course I woke up on Sunday, a bunch of my sunflowers were blowing open. And so I cut them all and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try selling in bunches of three 
for five dollars so if you remember the last time i sold bunches of six for ten dollars so it's really the same thing except you know you'd have to buy two of them to make up the ten dollar piece and i was curious to see what people would do so that being said um my total revenue that i brought in for this market was 559 dollars which i was happy with i just wanted to break 500 because of the heat um, of the $559, $191 came from flowers and $368 came from soap sales. Because the traffic significantly dropped off at 1140, I actually lowered the prices of my bouquets at noon. So typically I lower the prices, well not typically since the last market, I started lowering the prices for the last hour because you know, at that point, you'd rather make some money than no money with those flowers, right? So um, understanding that the last hour is very slow and you have fewer flowers, it's a lot harder to sell. So I lowered the larger bouquets to $15. At that point, I had, I think it was three bouquets left. And then I had the posies at $7 for five. I dropped it to $5 and I kept the sunflowers three for $5. Um, what was interesting to me was in the beginning, the large bouquets sold really, really quickly. Um, I mean, within the first half hour, I had sold five of the 10 large bouquets. So I was like, this is not a problem. So it was just really um, interesting to me that afterwards they just started sitting there and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But the posies, I really only sold, I think it was like two at that $7 price point. Um, so all that to say $191 in terms of flower sales, that is actually the lowest that I've done in flower sales since early June. Um, and I have some, some thoughts around why, but let's, let's continue with the numbers. So cost of goods sold $200 between the soap and the flowers. Um, just to recap, if this is your first time watching my videos for my bouquet, I am trying to factor in the cost of my labor to produce a bouquet. So that is everything from starting from seed to weeding to harvesting, right? Like it's ultimately a guesstimate, but I ended up with basically a $4 cost for my bigger bouquets. Um, it was like a $3 cost for the posies and then a dollar 50 cents for um, the bunches of sunflowers, the three for $5, um, you know, there's an art to your um, your cost of goods sold, but that's where I landed. Uh, labor at $15 an hour was $90, and that is labor related to me having to sit there, to drive there, to sell the flowers. Mileage for inventory, I did not have to, I, I did not source any blooms this time from my local grower. Um, I used all the stems from my farm and also um, didn't have to get soap or anything, so $0 there. Credit card fee, uh, $0. We're not gonna get into details here, but long story short, last time, um, the internet connection was, I guess, a bit wobbly. So I actually lost the $45 sale because the credit card uh, terminal uh, said that it went through and then at the last second, it didn't go through. And by then, you know, those people were gone and um, it was actually like a candle sale. So candles are my highest cost of goods sold. I literally pay like, $11 a candle because they're hand poured. The price of soy has skyrocketed. Um, I wanna make sure that, you know, my soap and candle make maker is getting fairly compensated for this stuff. So, you know, I'm selling it for $18 and it cost me $11. So that transaction cost me $33. So I was not happy. Um, I, I basically reached out to sum up. Um, they're like, can't really do anything about it, but we'll give you $15 of credit for your credit card transaction fees. And I was like, all right, I guess that's better than none. So that's why it's $0 right now. Um, and then state taxes. So New Jersey sales tax is 6.65% off of $559, $37. So that leaves me with a profit of $211, which is fine. Like it, it, it feels fair, it feels good, right? And that is $211 back to the business, right? Because I think a lot of people think about just like, well, you could have not paid yourself, right? And the point that I'm trying to make here is that I could have had someone else sit at the farmer's market. I could have had someone else harvest and you know make the bouquets. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who did it because the business is getting $211. So now that we've talked about the market, let's talk now about the takeaways from the market. and. 
When I reflect back, I think there are two fundamental errors that I committed. Um, I knew better than to commit them, but sometimes we all need to just make our own mistakes to reinforce what we already know or need to learn, right? So the first one is you always want to maximize your cart size or cart value. And this is regardless of if you're selling in person or if you're selling online, you want each transaction to be as high as possible. So let me give you an example. Five people spending $20 each is gonna net you $100. 10 people spending $10 each is also gonna net you $100. Or not net you, but it's gonna give you $100, right? Um, but there is a difference. You would rather sell to five people at $20 each because it is less effort. And I know in prior videos I've said, you know, I'm playing between the $15 and $20 price point. I think there are more people who are going to pay for the $15 bouquet, that kind of stuff. You know, fundamentally from a marketing perspective, um, you should be trying to go after you should be trying to go after the $20 bouquet because even if you make fewer sales, um, you know, you are spending less effort potentially to make the same amount of money. And that's really the question at the end of the day. If you lower your price, are more people going to buy and therefore you're going to exceed the total sales that you would have done if you kept it at a higher price. So that was really what I did this time, right? Because even though I offered a $17 bouquet and a lot of those sold, unfortunately I had two lower price points and I have never sold a bouquet under like $10 at this market until this weekend. So I had my posies at $7 and then I had my sunflowers at $5. The sunflowers at $5 was a mistake. I will only sell bunches of six or more for $10 or more going forward. Because even though a couple of people did buy two bunches, there were, there were definitely people who were initially looking at the bigger bouquets or even the posies and then went for the sunflowers because it was just $5. Those are people who would have ultimately spent more with me than um, if, they would have spent more with me if I didn't have the $5 sunflowers as an option. Now, granted, I also think I got a couple of sales where they wouldn't have bought any flowers at all. Like there was a dad who was walking around with her young daughter and the daughter looked at the sunflowers and you could tell the dad was like, oh, it's only five bucks, then I'll grab a, a bunch for her, right? So he certainly wasn't gonna grab a $17 bouquet for her. But that being said, you know, I don't think enough of those kind of people came around to offset the, the, the loss that I was making from those who would have made a greater purchase. So, you know, there, there is a farm that I really respect there in, um, they're also in New Jersey. They're about 30 minutes South of me. It's called Moonshot Farms. I follow them on Instagram and I also follow, um, or I guess the farmer, uh, Rebecca is also in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in. And, you know, I always pay attention whenever she answers questions on that Facebook group. And there was someone who was actually talking about how you price at markets and, you know, what kind of price points you offer. And she made this point where she said, you know, last year they offered like a $12 option. They scrapped a lot of the lower price options. They are now selling bouquets basically for like $25. They have like a $22 mason jar alternative. And I think they even sell a bouquet for $30, right? So they really reposition themselves as a premium and just like good quality flower farm. There is another flower vendor there that sells at a much lower price point. And, you know, she's really been able to carve that niche for people who are seeking um, higher value quality type of flowers and they're willing to pay for it. So the reason why I bring this up is because for the first time, I felt like I had multiple people come to my booth saying, your flowers lasted me for three weeks. I mean, the majority were saying for two weeks. There's a woman who said three weeks, and I think that she was someone who really took care of her flowers. But the first five bouquets that sold were from regulars who came back to me. And this is important because, you know, once you start establishing that base, right, it, it like you've already positioned yourself. So one takeaway for me was just, I'm not gonna offer really any lower value option. Um, for the posies, one of the things that I did afterwards when I couldn't sell the remaining two bunches, I actually gave away a few. I mean, towards the end, I was trying to get people to buy the $15 on sale big bouquet for 
um, to get a free posy with it. And that obviously was a draw. Um, but at the end, I was actually like, I put two posies together and put it in a vase. And I was like, I should have just done that because like that looks a lot more full. Um, I could have easily sold it for like $12 or so. So I think next time going into the market, I'm going to push the limits. I'm going to go for a $20 bouquet and then maybe provide like a $12 or a $13 option, right? But not going to provide anything below a $10 option. So that was the first fundamental error. I created such low price points that I lowered my cart size. Um, and I only had 27 transactions at this market. So lower cart size plus fewer transactions equals to lower sales overall. My last market where I brought in over $700, I had like 40 something transactions, right? Um, and that brings me to point number two, that theory of pilot high to sell definitely rings true. So granted this time I wanted to take a break. I didn't want to source additional stems. I was honestly a bit burnt out and I didn't want to make a lot of bouquets. And I'll tell you that again, first five bouquets sold very, very quickly. Last three bouquets were like pulling teeth and a part of it is just the psychology of not having enough flowers. I'm not the only one who, who says this, who feels this on Facebook forums repeatedly. You have people who support the notion that the last 20% of flowers are always the slowest to sell. So if you bring 20 bouquets, right, your last four are gonna be really, really difficult to sell. If you bring 10 bouquets, the last two are gonna be difficult to sell. You know, I, I think as you go up in numbers, like if I brought 100 bouquets, for example, it's not like the last 20 are gonna be hard to sell, but definitely the last few are still gonna be harder to sell. So, you know, it's also another one of those things where I'm thinking about for the next market, um, even if it is hot, I will force myself to buy stems or I'll buy bouquets from my local grower because at the end of the day, you need a lot of variety for people to choose from or just to visually attract them to the booth in order for you to really increase those sales. So, you know, these are not, you say, these are not um, like, it's not like I was enlightened by this, right? But I think it really was something that, um, even though I knew at the beginning of the season, these two fundamental takeaways, I think as you start getting into the season and you start just like living things out and you start seeing a vendor who is selling at a much cheaper price point and you're afraid, like sometimes logic just starts disappearing, right? And you need one of these, let's bring you back to reality moments. And it's just really made me rethink, you know, look, I am not flower farming full time, but I should be thinking about it as if, you know, this was a true business because clearly I don't want to undercut other people who are doing it right, but I also want to make it worth my time. And, you know, what do I like the, the fact that people came to me and told me that they really love the flowers. It gave them such a great vase life. They thought it was totally worth it is absolutely a confidence boost. Right. And it really gives me that confidence to position my flowers as a higher value type of flower because you know i made this comment once to my friend the the, the local grower friend i was like you know i don't want to be that super premium type of farmer because then if anything goes wrong right like they're going to start complaining but i don't think at that 20 dollar mark you get to that complaining yet right i think as long as you know you are relatively consistent with the quality that you output things should be okay so in any case, I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, it was certainly helpful for me to just sit on what happened to reflect a few f for, for a few days. Um, I'm hoping that this is the last of, you know, the 90 degree type of market days. Um, in a few days, we're actually going to have low 80 weather. I'm super excited for it. So we always know that once the better weather comes back, obviously people are winding down on vacations after Labor Day. And so I'm hoping for a much better fall season. In any case, if you have any comments on my experience, any questions, please put them in the comments below. I look forward to reading them.